veera pandya katta bomman we've seen him only in a movie but that has had so much impact that even a small child of this generation knows about him his bravery was not enhanced for the sake of the movie but that was the real quality of this king this is a story of the hero of panjalankuruchi the most valiant Hello everyone I'm Ungal Anban Heman today we'll be looking at the most valiant Veera Pandya Katta Bomman but before we get there don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet In the later part of the 18th century the Panchalankuruchi chieftain Veera Pandya Katta Bomman was one of the earliest to fight against the British dominance in India until his last breath He stood by his principles and refused to pay taxes to the British. Though his life ended in a tragedy, the death of this hero created a deep thirst for independence in his people. In 1760, Veera Pandya Katta Bomman was born to Jagaveera Pandya Katta Bomman II and Arumuga Thammar. He was also called Karuttaiya. He had four younger siblings including his famous dumb brother Kumara Swami also known as Umai Thurai later Katta Bomman got married to Veera Jakkamar Before we get into Katta Bomman story first of all what was a palayam and who were the palayakars was Katta Bomman just one person or were there many Katta Bommans let's take a look The Madurai Nayaka kingdom had been divided into 72 territories called palayams and each of these palayams were ruled by a palayakarar or a paligar they ruled their palayam on behalf of the nayaka king after the fall of the nayaka kingdom the palayakarars became independent chieftains panjalankuruchi was a similar palayam that was formed in the later period it was ruled by a line of chieftains with the title katta bomman veera pandya katta bomman hail from this line in 1790 After the death of his father Jagaveera Pandya Katta Bomman Veera Pandya Katta Bomman took the throne as the new palayakarar of Panjalankuruchi at the age of 30 The three main people in his court were his minister Tanadipadi Sivasubramanya Pillai his commander Vellaiya Thevan and his brother Umai Thurai During the 18th century almost the whole of Tamil Nadu was ruled by the nawab of arkad however the actual force behind them was the british east india company later in 1790 the british grew even more powerful and proclaimed that they own full rights to collect taxes from his kingdom and that all the paligars were supposed to be loyal and pay respect to them it was at this tough time that katta bomman took up the throne As per the British there were two most powerful polygars in the earlier part of the 18th century it was Puli Thevar and in the later part it was Veera Pandya Katta Bomman now back to the story we look at two rivals of Katta Bomman Yettappan and the infamous collector Jackson Durai the polygars of Panjalankuruchi and Yettayapuram were rivals over many generations the Yettayapuram polygar Yettappan was an ally of the British while Katta Bomman rebelled against the british and refused to pay tax to them during this time the british collector wc jackson was responsible for tax collection on account of three issues jackson sent a letter to katta bomman asking him to meet him in ramnad the three issues were complaints from yettayapuram that he frequently raided their villages he taxed heavily the weavers of panjalankuruchi who worked for the british and he did not pay taxes to the british though in reality the only concern to the british was katta bomman was not paying them taxes katta bomman did not respond to any of jackson's letters to pay his dues finally in 1798 jackson summoned him to meet him within 15 days in his ramnad office katta bomman agreed and left with his army to meet him he tried to meet jackson in kutralam then in chakambatti and then in sivagiri but jackson procrastinated the meeting just to insult him 
before the meeting in Ramnad could happen, he made Katta Bomban follow him for a total of 23 days, over 400 miles. Finally, in Ramnad, Katta Bomban and his minister Tanadipati Pillai were able to meet the collector, leaving their army outside the fort. But during the meeting, the insults continued. Katta Bomban was made to stand during the three hours of inquiry. At the final stage, it became clear that Jackson's objective was to arrest him somehow. At this point, Katta Bowman became furious and left the place midway. Realizing the situation inside the fort, Katta Bowman's army entered. In the fight that followed, a British officer was killed and Tan Adipati Pillai was captured by the British. Katta Bowman wrote to the British governor about his ill treatment in Ramnad and requested for the release of his minister and also promised to be loyal to the British. The British governor realized that all the trouble was due to Jackson's misbehavior and suspended him. Katta Bowman's minister was released and he was asked to meet the new collector Lushington and pay the taxes he owed. However, back in Panjalankuruchi, Katta Bowman made preparations for war. Katta Bumban strengthened his fort and gathered a huge army. He organized a league of polygars against the British, which included many powerful polygars. With this, Katta Bumban became far more powerful and was ready to face the British head on. However, by that time, the British killed Tipu Sultan in Mysore and that was the beginning of bad luck for Katta Bumban. You may wonder why would the killing of Tipu Sultan bring bad luck to Katta Bowman? To defeat Tipu Sultan, the British had to engage a massive amount of their army. By this time, that mission was accomplished, which meant they were able to divert all those forces to attack Katta Bowman. After defeating Tipu Sultan, a huge amount of the British forces was freed up and diverted to the south to control the Polygars. Major Bannerman commanded these forces. He passed an order to Katta Bumman to meet him in Parleyangote and also warned all other Polygars to not support him. But Katta Bumman did not meet him and Bannerman immediately marched to Panjalankuruchi and attacked his fort. Katta Bumman was shocked and was not prepared as most of his army was away at that time. Even then, he bravely fought against the British. His commander Vellayat Devan was killed, but his brother Umayture continued to fight valiantly. In the meantime, Katta Bowman and his minister Tana Adipati Pillai escaped, but with the help of Ettappan, Tana Adipati Pillai and the other leaders were captured and executed. With this, many of the rebelling polygars surrendered to the British. So he lost his fort, his commander, his minister, and the League of Polygars were crushed. At this point, the most important thing was his own safety. At a later time, he could come back again and rebuild everything from the scratch. However, he could not escape the misfortune that came in the form of the Pudukote king. Kattabomen moved from one place to the other and then reached the forests near Pudukote. Finally, misfortune came in the form of the Pudukote king Vijay Raghunatha Tondaiman who was an ally of the British. He spotted Kattabomman and handed him over to the British. On 16th October 1799, Bannerman brought Kattabomman to Kayatar. He was all set to be hanged in front of all the polygars. To the amazement of the British, Kattabomman exuded a casual and courageous spirit even at that time. As he walked towards the tree, he stared contemptuously at Yetapan and the other rival polygars who sided with the British. Upon reaching the news, he wished he had stayed back in his fort as that would have been a better place for him to have died at. He took the news with bravery and contempt for the British and the valiant Kattabumman was no more. A man who graciously embraced death. A king who always stood against the British. A warrior who will be remembered for his valor.
வீரபாண்டிய கட்டபொம்மன்